is here. And you want to take good care of this black woman, but they don't care about us. Mm. But we're lazy. We content with that because we want to spend our money on video games and sneakers and cars and rims and sims and white women and nightclubs and booze and, and vacations. We are like children. Politically, we are children suffering from infantilism. What does a child do? A child wakes up with two with, with, with only two interests: to have fun, eat and sleep. That's it. A child wants to wake up, have fun, eat and sleep. That is black folks. That is black. Mm. We are in a state mm. of arrested development where we are the children of the world, which is ironic. Why? Because we're the elders of the world. We were around two million years before anybody else even came about. So how did they make the oldest people in the world the babies of the world? Exactly, Doctor. And, and, and honestly, my, my North Star podcast, I get a lot of gruff and I get a lot of... You know, a lot of love. I got a lot of love, but I get a lot of, you know, um, heat when I go through my African-American community over north, wherever, because I'm constantly on our heels about stuff like this. I feel that we have more. I don't feel that African-Americans are suffering anymore from uh, slavery. I feel that we're suffering now from freedom. We don't know what to do with the fact that we're free. What does freedom? Yeah, freedom costs. You know, there's 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 the same consequence with freedom as there is with slavery. I think Africans were free for the first time and we don't know what to do with it you know that's why we kill each other like that level though okay go ahead take that to another level it's not the freedom that's the problem it's the fact that we want to be accepted by the person responsible for taking the freedom away in the first place Mm. We, we don't want the freedom not because it's freedom it's because it doesn't come with that close relationship that we desire from white people black people are in love with white folks we're addicted to them we are absolutely addicted to white folks. Our whole standard of everything is based on them. Our standard of beauty is based on them. Our standard of success is based on them. I mean, look at all these black kids running around talking about they're gay and lesbian. You didn't have this problem eight years ago before Obama got elected. They got it now. White people do it, so we want to do it. Anything they do, I don't care what it is. Anything they do, even if it's not beneficial, we will do it. Because the one thing slavery put in us that ain't been taken out yet, the one thing slavery put in us that ain't been taken out yet is the inferiority complex. Mm. The central problem of the Negro, because that's what I'm going to call it, because we damn sure ain't acting like no African. The <laughs> central problem of the Negro is he feels inferior to the white man. And people who feel inferior don't want to compete. They don't want to create nothing on their own. They want to do what? Participate. That's why black people are the only people who are looking to do what? Participate. Chinese trying to build power. Arabs trying to build power. East India trying to build power. Anglo-Saxon trying to build power. European Jews, power. Black men don't want no power. You don't want no independent institutions. He wants to do what? Build relationships. And assimilate <laughs> amongst his enemy. But he fails to realize that will never happen. Mm. And why will that never happen? Because we were once slaves. That's part of it. But that's not the whole reason. Why that won't happen? Because we're black and from Africa. That's part of it. But that ain't the main reason. The main reason he is not going to accept you is because you are the genetically dominant species on the planet. Africans are the genetically dominant homo sapiens on the the planet. If the white man allows you to mix freely amongst him, you exterminate his population. You exterminate his population. He is genetically recessive. You are genetically dominant, and he never forgets that. That's the basis of his whole interaction with you. All of the terror and anger and violence and oppression that we suffer, we suffer because the white man is eminently conscious of the fact that the black man can remove him off this planet and he don't need a gun or a bomb. All he needs to do is reproduce with his woman and in 50 years his whole community be brown, 35 years it'll be jet brown, and 100 years it'll be black. You are his kryptonite. And what do you do when you have kryptonite? You keep it away from you. You don't bring it amongst you. So the belief that we can somehow assimilate amongst white folks is the most illusory, uh, uh, fantastic, um, um, out of this universe, ridiculous and preposterous solution we could possibly have to the race problem in America. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, doctor. Um, another. I'm sorry, I got you here, and I'm I'm throwing all these questions at you. One last question. No, you're good. Go ahead, brother. I'm good. Okay. Okay. Um, I see that Jay Z got a uh, title, um, yes. and, and he has uh, Rock Nation Sports. Now, I'm on this podcast, I'm constantly saying, yo, all artists, if you do music, you need to get to uh, uh, Rock Nation. All athletes should be signing on to Rock Nation. I'm sorry, if you do music, you need to be getting the title. And if you do athlete athletics, you need to be trying to get to Rock Nation. 
being that um, sports and music are our main export, am I tripping with that? Is that something that would be nice if we was like, now, yo. music is America's black music is America's second largest expo export industry. Hmm, okay. It's a trillion dollar business. Black music for okay. America is a trillion dollar business. Dang. How you doing, sister? Okay, but would, would, do you think that would be a good idea as far as that? I think it is a good idea, but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Part of our redefinition of what a black business is requires that that definition include that that black business reinvests back into black people. So if everyone goes to Title and Rock Nation, which I support, the, J, before that happens, Jay-Z needs to commit a certain percentage of of the revenue from his businesses back into the black community. Okay. And we need to specify how that's going to be committed back into the black community. In other words, you're not going to be giving a million dollars to T.D. Jakes every summer because T.D. Jakes is a bourgeois. He does not represent grassroots people. Okay. And w w that's not what we're talking about. We're going to specify how you're going to contribute your 20%, 25%, whatever you're saying, you're going to uh, donate back into the black community. So we got to make sure he is accountable to the people, just as we're asking other entertainers to be accountable to us, it, accountable to us, it got to go 360. Right. It's the same thing I tell these black capitalists running around talking about black people won't buy from me, black people won't buy from me. It's because you're a capitalist, and the essence of capitalism is selfishness. You want black people to support you, but what are you doing for black people? You want my support, but you ain't supporting us. Mm. You're taking your money to a white bank in a white suburb where you have a white home with a white wife. You're not a black business. Nothing about you, black. If your money does not go back into the black community, nobody is obligated to support you. So we need to redefine what a black business is because what we got now is a bunch of selfish black capitalists who simply want to get rich off their people's back. Mm. And when we say support black business, we're not talking about supporting black capitalists who simply want to, want to get rich off their people's back. When we say support black business, we're talking about supporting black businesses who support black people. It must be 360. If it's not a 360 deal, we don't want it. Right, right. And I think that's something that we have to start doing, too. I mean, I, I think that African-Americans are way too willy nilly with who we give uh, credence to. You know, Michael Jordan, we die for these shoes, man. And I and Mike, he married a white woman. Man, Mike, no black man should ever buy another pair of them sneakers. Now, we got to talk nope. about that, Dr. Umar. I have to talk about that because, like I said, I'm from Minnesota. So this is going to be a big topic. You're, you're, you're interracial. Do you think that an African-American can never, ever help his community if he has a white woman? Sure he can, but he can never be of ultimate good. And see, that's what I need people to understand. See, there is doing some good, and then there's being of ultimate good. So, for example, Jay-Z could do some good. Mm -hmm. Oprah could do some good. But they could probably never be of ultimate good because they're too aligned with the forces of white power that keep black people where they are. In other words, they're so close to the dragon's mouth that if they move the wrong way, the dragon might bite their head off. Tupac, Biggie Small, Sam Cooke, Michael Jackson, Prince. You understand? Okay. They're at a okay. certain level. See, the richer you are, when you make your money through them, when you make your money through them, this is why independent black achievement is so important. Take me. I don't have not even 10% of the wealth those people have, but I'm freer than all of them. Dr. Umar is freer than any of them. I can say what I want, go where I want, speak up and stand up. They can't do what I do. Why? Mm. Because they made themselves through the white process. They went through the white protocol to get rich. You see, Jay-Z went through Universal. Oprah went through the big TV. They went through them. And once you build that relationship, you can't cut it off. Mm. Michael Jackson tried to cut it off. Prince tried to cut it off. Look what happened to them. You don't cut it off. You see, so that doesn't mean they can't do a lot of good. They can do a lot of good. But mm. they can never leave. They can never lead a genuine freedom struggle for us as a people because the cost they would have to pay to separate themselves would be too high. Gotcha. And that's why we got to raise our children from birth. We need you to get your money independently. We need. Remember when hip hop was being sold out the back of cars? Yes. Brothers can say what they want because yeah. I packaged this, I sold this, I burned this, I made this. Now, Universal, Sony, Epic, ain't nobody free no more. Mm. Everybody got a sleeve chain on their ankle, they wrist, it's on them. Oprah got a chain somewhere. You just don't see it. Jay-Z got a chain somewhere. LeBron got a big-ass chain. You just can't see it. Damn, that's and my that's guy, man. I, I love LeBron. I, I love LeBron James. People, you understand? I, but here's the thing. The richer you become, the less relevant you become to your people. So 
something's wrong with that. The richer a black person becomes, the less relevant they become to their community. You want to know why? Because they're making their money from white folks. And the two white people make you, it's a privilege to be rich in America through white folks. It's a privilege. So the richer they allow you to become, the less able you are to help your people. The less able, this is why they're buying 100 cars, bro. This is why they got 25 houses. This is why they got Louis bags and Gucci rags and flip flops and all. Why? It's the only thing they're allowed to do with their damn money is spend it like children. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's crazy. It. Oprah should have over 25 uh, oh. manufacturing plants. Oh, my God. Oprah should be manufacturing cars. Oprah should be JC2, LeBron2. They should have no less than 500 workers. Every last one of them should have 500 black people who work for them. Now, with Rock Nation, he's working on it, though, because Rock Nation infrastructure is predominantly black, and I, I tremendously respect J.C. for doing that. Right. You know, I think he's trying to do the right thing, which is why I'm being patient with my brother. And that's because what I, I know he can't move the way you and but, I move. And I said that. I can see him trying to move in that direction. Right, and I said that on my uh, last episode, uh, Dr. Umar. I was saying I grew up a Tupac fan, but I was like, I think maybe Tupac might have been playing checkers. J.C. seems like he's playing chess. Like, the moves that he's making are real strategic and real tough to do being uh, coming from the rap community you know what i'm saying so i was like i said the same thing you said like let me fall back until i see what plan jay-z is trying to do because he's trying to do something i think i think he's trying to do it i think he's trying to do it and to be honest with you know beyonce you know with some of the things she done with the lemonade album and i shout out to the black panthers at the last super bowl mm -hmm. uh two years ago you know she may have been a big influence on him too because no black man wants to see his woman being black at him and i think <laughs> after he saw how beyonce stepped out there first he probably said okay I'm going to have to follow suit. They're doing what they can. That's why I defended Beyonce when people were like, yeah, she did that, but she ain't spending the... Listen, what she did at that Super Bowl with that Black Panther tribute, you know, even though it was subversive, we knew what she was doing. Right. And that's all she could do right now because we don't want to see them get murdered. I don't see nothing happen to Oprah. I don't see nothing happen to J.O.B. Right. They got to move a certain, a way. certain way. They can't move like us. But see, the next stage of their game, the next stage of their game is to find people at the bottom, the grassroots level who they can divert that money to to do the things the way they need to be done. And, and let me tell you the obstacle to that. Mm -hmm. The obstacle to them getting the money to the grassroots level is most of them have white accountants. Most of them have white accountants. White att their economic infrastructure is white for a lot of them. Even though the business infrastructure may be black in terms of the employee base, their economic structure, they have a lot of white folks involved in it. Got you. Got you. So how do I get Dr. Umar Johnson $2 million? without my Jewish lawyer knowing, without my Anglo-Saxon attorney knowing. And you know, white, po white people don't play that. They're going to run right back and tell their masters. They're going to run right back and tell their masters because it's all about race first. Remember, every, all white people have an obligation to keep white people on top. All of them do. So if they even think they're doing something that's revolutionary, they're going to snitch them out. And that's because why the obligation to the race is greater. Yep. And that's why I put pressure on you dope dealers. That's what I'm saying. I'm not I, I almost got in a fight the other day at a barbershop, Dr. Umar. Look, man, y'all y'all need to be sending our people money, man. Nobody cares and knows where your money comes from, man. All these cats' money being watched. Y'all out here selling all these drugs and stuff. Put $100 in the thing and send it to somebody that we need, man. You know what I'm saying? I just seen black youngster walk through Walmart with a handful of $100 bills dropping it on the ground. Come on, people. Let's send this stuff to, to our people like Dr. Umar. I'll, even if you listen to my show, Dr. Umar, check out my podcast. You'll hear me say a lot like, I see all this balling and money. Why doesn't Dr. Umar have his school? Why aren't people throwing money to a school? And the main thing that I hear, and we're going to talk about your school, people say they want to get so critique, so critical of our, oh, what is he doing with this? Sh I told this, shut up, man. You know what I'm saying? If you was that. Well, let, let, me, he, let, let me say this to that. Go ahead. Let me say this to that, and I appreciate you for bringing that up. A lot of people in the conscious community are hustlers. Mm -hmm. right, we just got to keep it real. The black consciousness, just like the black church, it's another hustle. Okay, right. For a lot of people, that's all it is. And because of so many hustlers in the conscious community, and I can say this because, you know, as someone who's one of the elites in it, the most requested in the world at this point as a scholar, you know, I can say this. Most of them are hustlers. Mm. They, they're using the consciousness to feed their family. And that's it. And right. I don't have a problem with them making money to feed their family. I got a problem with the fact that that's, pri that's primary. That should not be primary. The priority should be freedom. The priority should be liberation. The priority should be redemption. The priority would not be how much money am I going to get from here and there. When I go speak in certain cities, and I hear it all the time, people say, Doc, we want to thank you for coming. Because such and such, we tried to get him here, he wouldn't come. Such and such flat out told us there didn't enough money in this city for him. Such and such told us we had to pay him X, Y, and Z. 
You see what I'm saying? And this is what I get on a regular basis because I go to small cities as well as a big city. I don't just go where I know I'm going to sell out at. I'm going to go places where only 50 people are going to show up because you only got but 100 in that city. And that's a small little town that nobody never heard about because right. my heart is in it for the right place. And what people need to understand, my heart is in the right place. But what people need to understand about me, because I don't come from that hustle culture. You know what I mean? I was blessed enough to go to college. I was blessed enough to get three master's degrees. I was blessed enough with two bachelors. Blessed enough to get a job. Blessed enough to be in a profession where I'm always going to be in demand as a school psychologist. So I don't have to hustle consciousness the way other people do. And to be honest with you, that's how I got to where I've gotten so quick. Because people see the heart in Dr. He's done this, he's done this. My college tour, I don't make a dime for that. My Africa trip, I don't make a dime for that. My Tuesday morning black parent calls, I don't make a dime for that. So much of what I do, I give, I give, I give. So many countless numbers of parents and children I've helped for free without a dime. Prisons for free without a dime. I don't even charge to speak in prisons. I don't charge to speak in juvenile detention because I believe that's something sacred I should be doing from my heart. You can't find another scholar who rose like that in my age bracket. They hustlers. They <laughs> yeah. hustlers. And so when people see me raising money for a school, $600,000 saved up, they say, well, now nah, he got to be spending that. You know why they say that? Because they would be spending it. <laughs> they judging me from their own corrupt consciousness. True that. They're like, if I had that type of money, I would be tapping on some of that because they have to. You want a street grinding. I don't have to grind. I have a profession that allows me to pay my bills so I don't have to steal from the people. Now, if they were raising that money, they probably would have had to steal from it because they don't have a profession to pay their bills. I don't have that problem they got. You see, I'm not rich by any means. You understand? I have my struggles like anyone else, but I'm a lot more comfortable than those guys in a certain respect. And because of that, they find it hard to believe that I'm not stealing because if it were them, they would be stealing. And that's why they always got an issue with the money. No doubt. No doubt, doctor. Well, I just wanted to say um, thank you so much for coming on the North Star. And you are definitely representing what you're talking about by coming on our podcast because we are, like I said, we are a podcast. We got North Side, South Side, and we got St. Paul here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So the fact that you came and talked to me, brother, I really appreciate it. Doctor, And let me really drop a show for your listeners. Uh, number one, we got the Africa trip. If anyone wants to come with us to Africa, two weeks, July 27th to August 10th, we're going to Ghana, Togo, and Benin. Uh, Ghana, Togo, and Benin. Anyone who needs that information can email me through drumarjohnson.com or they can text me at area code 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858. We also have the second annual Black College and Consciousness Tour, which will be June 28th to July 12th, uh, 14 days and 14 nights. Anyone wanting to go to that, the registration should be up next week, but they can get me through the website again or by the phone number 215 989 9858 in Detroit. We have the National Independent Black Parent Association Training Conference for anyone who wants to help us start a chapter of the most important organization, the National Independent Black Parent Association, to organize black parents to fight against educational racism. We will be in Detroit June 9th and 10th from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. at the Tower Center. And last but not least, I want your parents to know that I do have my Tuesday morning black parent teleconference. Anytime they have questions about their children, they can call and get free advice from an expert school psychologist. And that number is 857-232-0158, 857-232-0158. And the access code is 870-864-POUND, 870-864-POUND. And I just want to say Minneapolis, can't wait to see you guys again. It's been about four years. Only been there once before Urban League. They jam-packed the joint out. Uh, yeah. and I, think the fire I remember that. <laughs> not making the people. You were there? Yeah, I was there. We was up in there. Oh, yeah, that was a. It came out heavy. I didn't know because <laughs> yeah. when I saw the Minneapolis, I was like, there's a white town. Yeah, uh, white here. We know about so the they, they packed it out. So, you know, the Capri Theater, as I said, you know, it, it's not very large. So, folks who want to come out, get that information. I'm going to talk about special ed, ADHD, parent rights, school to prison pipeline, how to protect your children because it's about the solutions not just the information. I'm going to talk about Donald Trump, the legacy of Obama, pan-Africanism, white supremacy. I'm going to deal with it all. So Wednesday, June 14th, doors open up at 4. Tickets available right now. Princeofpanafricanism.eventbrite.com or drumarjohnson.com. Get your tickets. It's going to be hot and heavy June 14th in Minneapolis. June 14th in Minneapolis. So y'all heard that. North side.